I think it's... Hi guys, this is Matthias, and uh, even though the footage in this video is the normal Battery 1 content, what I want to talk about today is why you have seen such an enormous amount of haters stream sniping me during my live streams that happens on my main channel. A link to that channel is in the description. It turns out, as so many people have suspected, this is ideological and political, more so than related to anything that has to do with Battlefield. Not to underestimate the people that really, really want attention for the sake of the game itself. Now, about seven, maybe eight years ago, I started uh, sharing my political views and my uh, frustration and my attempts to try to understand why we in Sweden and Europe are seeing such an enormous increase in hateful violence and also what criminologists call new crimes in Sweden. I don't know how they express it in other countries, but that is something that I started using in the late 90s and the early 20s when they talked about crimes that wasn't really related to our culture and that we'd never seen before and which they of course couldn't give an accurate explanation to because that is associated with xenophobia, racism, fascism and all those words that you will be called if you try to be constructive in these types of discussions. Now lately the media landscape has changed a bit in Sweden and that is because not only is it almost impossible to hide this anymore but the violence have changed even more so than when I talked about it and it's more gang related. We see a lot more organized crimes happening in Sweden nowadays. Terminology such as hybrid warfare is uh, being used to describe the Swedish situation. So media are now kind of trying to see, make it seem like they are being more open and, and being more honest about the crimes. But the only thing that really changed is that the crimes have been even more so severe and there has been more of them. The gang related murders, mostly shootings, are the kind of crimes that they simply can't deny. So now one of the biggest problems that I had way back when I tried to talk about it was that back then it was much less known who these perpetrators were that committed these crimes and because of that a lot of people tried to flip this into this being a Swedish problem based on the Swedish population and the Swedish uh, hate and prejudice and whatnot. And that means that at that time I had to spend a lot more effort proving who these people actually were that committed these crimes and of course that puts a target on me by people that want to use arguments as racist, fascist and uh, different kinds of phobia that has been very popular among people that deny these types of crimes. Now I've also been very outspoken against terrorism and different terrorist organizations. Now what's important to understand about terrorist organizations is that even though the active terrorists may not be that many in numbers, these organizations wouldn't be able to operate if they didn't have a massive support from people that belongs to the same demographic, same country, same ideology, same religion and so on. So now it has been more and more obvious that a number of people, I'm not sure how many, are really really hateful against me because I'm against terrorism because I'm against violence, rape, robbery, assault, shooting, stabbing, burning and all these things that have become your everyday life in Sweden and many other European countries. So now what I want you guys to think about is this. What kind of a person hates me because I'm against rape? What kind of a person hates me because I'm against terrorism? What kind of a person does it take to be hateful against me and harassing me every single day because I think robbery and shootings, stabbings, burnings is wrong. What kind of a person would that be? Now another aspect of this that's important to think about is that one of the things that makes the western world very very unique in the world we live in today is that we in the western world have an enormous amount of self-criticism towards what we do geopolitically in today's world but also what we have done in the past. We look at our own bad history uh, with very very harsh criticism. We have laws and we have traditions that makes it more or less impossible to question or discuss some of the things that we have done in the past 
the easiest example is of course um, the Holocaust of World War II, where denying this is actually either illegal in like it is in my country it's illegal to deny it or question it and even if it's not legal in your country it's more or less impossible to discuss it which in my opinion there's no reason why it shouldn't be like that the problem is that in other cultures let, let's say for example uh, from what I've heard about Turkey it is illegal the other way around to acknowledge the Ottomans uh, genocide of the Armenians that happened uh, in I believe Second World War as well and anybody that does that even though it's it's an established fact a historical fact that uh, the Ottoman Empire committed genocide on about a million Armenians. To my knowledge, if you say that openly in a country such as Turkey, I'm not sure if there are any more countries that have the same practice, but you will more or less ruin your life for saying that, when in the Western world it is the opposite. It is denying it that will give you the same kind of repercussions. Assuming the humanitarian crimes that were committed were committed by the Western world. Assist. Oh, that tripwire! <laughs> now, this difference between different cultures makes us in the Western world relatively unique, at least to my knowledge. It's also why it's so difficult for us to discuss things that are problematic with other cultures, because due to this one-sided or selective morality, also known as hypocrisy, we in the Western world not only do we not know enough about other cultures to even be able to criticize them for what they've done, but doing that will automatically result in you being called a racist or a few other words that in this context has the same meaning. Now generally speaking, I think self-criticism is something that is really really good. Me for example being Swedish, I have been brought up with and constantly, basically every day heard all these bad things that we in the Western world have done and are still doing, something that is part of our culture to constantly keep criticizing. It's there in all the TV series, all the movies, all the rock songs. I mean, just look at the, uh, the lyrics of Cherokee by Europe, the Swedish rock band, or Run to the Hills with Iron Maiden. There's been tens of thousands of TV series and movies about the Crusades or the witch trials, slavery, racism, and all these things. And as much as all of this is good, we should criticize it and we should end it, we should never accept it. It doesn't really make the world any better if we allow other cultures to have a completely different set of scrutiny or, should I say, the lack thereof. Now the irony in this is that if you are, in the Western world, if you are extremely criti uh, critical towards your own country, your own culture, your own people, you know, what do we call ourselves, white uh, Caucasians, I guess is the most commonly used word. Now this selective self-criticism of only our own culture is going to be very, very profitable if you are, let's say, a writer or a politician or a journalist. In some groups of people, you're even going to be almost lifted up to becoming some kind of a hero, while at the same time, if you would criticize some other cultures for still practicing some of these horrible things that we left behind hundreds or maybe thousands of years ago, then doing so is going to make you a racist. So now, as I've kind of hinted during the video, things are a little bit different now. When we see uh, gang-related violence, when we see rape, robbery, assault, uh, when we see uh, uh, buildings being blown up or cars set on fire. Today, we all know, generally speaking, who the people are that commit these crimes. But back in the days when I was active discussing this, this was very, very different. Due to the political landscape and the journalistic landscape, if you could call it that, it was almost impossible to get any viable or relevant information about the criminals that committed these crimes and therefore it was also of course much easier to deny who these people were. Now, one of the best examples of this, or maybe easiest example I should say, is uh, the incident with ASAP Rocky in 2018 I think it was. Now, ASAP Rocky is, if you don't know, an Afro-American rapper who was in Sweden, Stockholm, and while being here he was attacked by, as it's described, two young men. 
Now, I remember this very well because I was very interested in seeing the reactions from people about this incident. And basically everything I saw from Americans, uh, especially Afro-Americans, uh, whether it was podcasts or different news outlets or different politicians, it was all about how racist we Swedish people were. And I was watching like long discussions, like more than hours long discussions where people brought up all kinds of false information about Sweden and it seemed like some people were basically competing about who could say the worst thing about us when it, as it turns out, the guy that attacked Asap Rocky was an immigrant from Afghanistan that at the time had been in Sweden for about four years consistently of course collected welfare from the Swedish taxpayers while at the same time consistently committed crimes while being here now obviously he was welcomed here as a refugee, despite the fact that he and about 95% of all the immigrants we have here do not qualify for asylum status. This, the fact that most of these so-called refugees are not actually refugees, was another thing that brought up a lot of controversies way back when, when I tried to talk about it uh, in the first place. Nowadays, it's common knowledge that it's a very small percentage of these immigrants that actually are refugees or qualify for asylum status. But that being common knowledge today is very different from what it was when I tried to talk about it. Now, keep in mind also, people uh, spewing out all kinds of hatefulness towards Sweden, whether true or not, there is no repercussions for that. There's nothing that's there's nothing that's gonna happen to you. There's nothing that's gonna affect your career or your uh, your job or anything in your social life for spewing out a bunch of hate against what we are Caucasians. However, if you did that against any other group of people or if you actually spoke truthfully about other groups of people, especially if there was something negative to say about it, that would have an enormous negative effect on your life one way or another. Now, in the Western world, we have come very, very far when it comes to being self-critical, when it comes to being open and tolerant toward other people, and when it comes to making progress with democracy, freedom of speech, and uh, human rights, regardless of who you are, man, women, your sexual orientation, and your race and religion. The problem with this is that not everyone in the world agrees with our openness when it comes to criticism and when it comes to all people's rights. Unfortunately, we have a lot of selectiveness in this regard in many different areas of the world based on a variety of different uh, reasons that I probably shouldn't mention. And I'm pretty sure it's quite surprising to a lot of people to see that this is also spilling over to the everyday gaming experience of a streamer playing an almost eight-year-old battlefield. So yeah, some of you guys have been wondering why these people are so dedicated and where this hate and anger comes from. Well, here you have at least part of the answer. Anyway, please enjoy the rest of the video and thank you all for watching. Those flares are pretty good. Here, press your money, Fresher munition. We are losing objective apples. We have munition for this. Has anyone munition bestellt?
Feindlicher Panzer in Sicht. Der geht recht. Oh, oh, oh. 